Thanks for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, share, and like. Thank you very much. Yeah, hey everyone, welcome back. Back to my favorite topic, Azure AD Connect, synchronizing your identity to Office 365 and Azure AD. A friend of mine asked me about, I am not able to clear duplicate attribute from the environment. Some guest account is created automatically when the user is using email through a Microsoft account. I'm not really particularly familiar with what he's saying. I'm going to have to get a clarification. Maybe you can send me a screenshot of the object in question. But this does provide a good uh, opportunity for me to refresh my lab and look at sync conflicts in general. First off, I'm going to invite you to subscribe to the Shotoku Tech channel on YouTube. I have a playlist of Azure AD Connect related videos. I keep adding to those as the opportunity provides itself. And you don't want to miss out on any of the great videos that are landing there. As always, make sure to look in the description of the video for the various links to these articles. We're going to look at this article, Preparing for Direct Resynchronization. Basically, before you even start to synchronize, you want to get things cleaned up. Ensure a valid and unique email address in the proxy addresses attribute. Remove any duplicate values in the proxy address app attribute. If you have a user first.last at domain.com, that first.last at domain.com can only appear in the account of that user. If another account has that same first.last at domain.com in any of the fields, it's going to be a conflict by default. Valid and unique value for the principal name. Again here, first.last at domain.com has to be unique against all of the user principal names in your directory and anywhere in any of the proxy address or email address or SIP address fields. When we say valid, valid means pretty much alphanumeric characters. You can't have spaces, ampersands in the user principal name. Same goes for SAM account name. You really want to keep it as simple as first dot last or whatever your naming convention is. But again, you can't include diacritic marks, ampersands, spaces, and special characters. It has to be alphanumeric characters. The only way to survive synchronizing Office 365 with Azure AD Connect is to do your account management correctly at the beginning. Otherwise, things get really messy on the back end where you have to go tell users that, no, that really isn't your username anymore. We had to change it to this. That happens enough when there are merger and acquisition scenarios. You have two users, one in each company with first dot last. And you have to go to one guy and say, well, your name's going to be first.last2. And then there again, you want the proxy addresses and the email addresses and the SIP addresses to all match that first.last2. I've seen account management create a user first.last2 with an email address of first.last3 and a SIP address of first.last4 and then proxy addresses for first.last1 through 4, which means you basically burnt the possibility of using first.last1 through 4 for any other user, and you're not going to see it because all you see is first.last user. So uh, it gets really hard to check for the duplication across that attribute. Do your account management right from the start. So that addresses directory cleanup. Directory attributes. They're talking about specific attributes that must exist. See, they've got the specification of what invalid characters consist of in proxy addresses. SAM account name, user principal name. You have to do I am right. I would really match SAM account name to the prefix of the user principal name. And then that becomes your email address, SIP address, and is your primary SMTP and your proxy addresses. Don't make it difficult for yourself. This ID fix tool that's linked from the previous article can come in handy with cleaning up some of your directory attributes. It's just a simple download. It's contained in a zip file and you can just run it from the zip. Let's take a look at what happens here when I put a space in the user principal name of one of my users and then I'll run ID fix. So here I'm putting in a space in the user principal name prefix. And I go ahead and drop a space in the same account name. Now if you look closely at that article we were looking at before, same account name space might be an allowed character 
where space may not be allowed in the user principal name prefix. So here I'm running the ID fix. Tells you all about it. You do a search. It returns all the errors that it finds. And here it flags the user principal name. And it gives you the option you can automatically fix it. Now again here you're changing the user's name on them when you push this button. So you might have to go tell that user, hey, I changed your name. So you have to be real careful using this tool and you have to work with the larger team, the account management team, operations teams. Let's go see if it fixed all of our problems now. So we look back at the user. We see the user principal name is fixed, but the same account name still has a space in it because that space is an allowed <laughs> character. Oh, it, it messed up some other things. You got to be careful with ID fix. They do caution you on that. So the trial version of Windows Server 2016 had expired on my lab Hyper-V host and all of the guests had expired as well. One of them was my sync server. So it's been a couple of weeks where I've been getting this email once a day. And so yesterday I decided to re-up my lab. I loaded a fresh build of server 2016 evaluation on my physical server and fired up some new virtual servers in Hyper-V. Recreated users, note that I didn't back up Active Directory. I knew I was gonna create conflicts with what I've already synced previously because where I had previously had uh, first dot last one, I've created a new user first dot last one, and you have to know that the immutable IDs weren't gonna match when we fired up sync again. So we were gonna get a bunch of conflicts by default. This is not how you do Active Directory or Azure AD Connect. This is my lab. I wanted to put it back up. I wanted to create some conflicts to show you conflicts. So that's what we did. So when the operating system trial had expired, my sync server was down and I was getting a notice once a day that my sync was unhealthy. Now I put the sync server up and I've got these conflicts and I'm getting an email every half hour on the half hour, just like you see right here. So that was a little bit of excitement around here for a moment while we figured out, oh my goodness, we've got to fix all this. And so we're going to take a look at some of these sync errors and fixing them. And there was some other interesting information I uncovered. So this has an interesting problem of the user has some long number appended to the UPN prefix and you also have on Microsoft.com in the UPN. And of course we weren't expecting the immutable ID to match and we can see there's a conflict on the SMTP address with an existing account. So we're going to have to drill down a little bit and figure out what happened. Like I always say, if you meet the guy that knows everything, then you better run. So here we find out about Azure Identity Synchronization and Duplicate Attribute Resiliency. And we find out exactly where that long string of numbers and the on Microsoft came from in the UPN. It's stated right here. So you learn something new every day. I recommend you read this article. Link in the description below. Okay, so we're going to do install module MS Online. Of course, we need the new Git. We're also going to install module Azure AD. You see that happening here? Going to open Notepad. And we're going to go on into uh, AAD Connect and click on one of the sync errors. Look at the details of the error. You can see there's two object IDs, so they tell you there's two object IDs in the conflict. They tell you what attributes in conflict. So we can search for those object IDs in Office 365 and Azure using the PowerShell MS Online. Now sometimes when you're searching MS Online, you might want to use a search string, like a portion of that proxy address that's in conflict because you might have to do a get msol contact or msol group with a search string parameter to see if you can find ah oh, see here and yeah, we can't connect to msol because we got to lower our security for internet explorer it's blocking the sign in page when we go to connect msol so you have to go in and lower the 
security in Internet Explorer for administrators. Now we'll see it work. Connect, MS Online Service, MSOL Service. Yeah, it's just a mini web page that wants to take your username and password here. All right, we're in. So we're going to search for some users based on those two object IDs we got. MSOL user, object ID. So it's not found. We could do a search string and but I'm just going to find the other object. Basically, I'm concluding the object in conflict is just not going to make it, so it's not in the cloud. Obviously, we can go manually look in portal.azure.com. And we see that user isn't in there. So we'll have to do something to rectify the situation. Here, I'm using the metaverse search. So we're actually looking for the object in the metaverse. It's kind of the same view that we saw in the error, but it lets you see what the pending actions are on each of the connectors. So we're looking for this object. BBCO user 2, searching by UPN. And it returns that object, and we're going to look at it. And so here we can see both connectors, and we can look at the properties in each connector. It's nothing new in AD no actions pending in AD. So we go look at the Azure AD connector, Office 365 connector, and we can see it. all the pending actions are add. Now we can simulate a sync on this object. And we can look at the pending actions again on each of the connectors. Here again, each of the connectors is represented, and you can see the pending actions. And everything we see here basically says we want to add this user, but we can't because of the conflict. And we can even go back and look at that error again here in the Metaverse search results. Same error we were looking at before. So we know we need to do something with this particular user. That's just all there is. So we're going to have to change somebody's name and email address and all that and go inform them. So this again here points back to where I'm saying create the objects correctly in the first place. So we're going to change the username to something that we know won't conflict with anything else. We'll also have to change the email address. Of course, I'm going to make the SAM account name match the UPN suffix, and the UPN is going to match the email address and all of the other proxy address, SIP address, etc. You want to carry that all the way through, so what you did is obvious. Consistency across all the attributes just makes everybody's job easier. Okay, we're going to force the sync here, just do a delta. We didn't change any rules, didn't change any OU selection, so we can just do a Delta Sync. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Command not found. So, did I not import the module? Eh, it doesn't look like the module's in the session. Let's get module list available. 
and we get this whole big long list of modules that are available and of course none of them are AD Sync module so I have seen this before where a fresh install of Azure AD Connect at least in my lab doesn't register the PowerShell modules for AD Sync and you can confirm that by launching the sync rules editor. Here you see the error in the sync rules editor saying the module's not loaded. So here we're going to modify the path environment variable and we're going to add the correct path to the AD sync PowerShell plugin. Environment variables, path, and that correct path to add is C, program files, Microsoft Azure AD Sync, bin AD Sync. And once I add that, I actually move it up to the top. So watch close here. We're going to do just that. So you're going to want to start with a fresh PowerShell session so that you get that path variable correctly. Here I'm launching the rules editor again and you see that we don't get the error. Rules editor looks like it's supposed to. And I'm launching another PowerShell instance here. So now we can force sync and see that that one object that we mitigated is no longer in conflict. Let's take a look and see how it goes here. We'll go into the sync service console. We can see on the import that an object is modified. And we'll watch the export and we'll have a little bit lower count on the number of errors. There goes the export. You watch on the lower left, you can see an ad come through or a change. Okay, there we go. One less error, one add. We can look at that object and see that was the object that we mitigated. And so we know what we need to do to clear up the rest of these. So we got a lot of work left to do still. Microsoft, to their credit, has added additional information in Azure AD. Here you can go to the Azure AD Connect Blade in Azure and you have additional information similar to what we've seen, but it's just presented in a different way.
Okay, recapping sync conflicts. Objects that could be in conflict. Users with duplicate values in any of the important fields. Contact objects, whether they're synced from AD or cloud. If they have a mail that matches any of the above, then that's a conflict. Guest accounts in Office 365 for SharePoint or app access. Again, here, there has to be unique mail not matching anything in Active Directory. Proactively preventing conflicts. As part of account creation process, scripts could be used to check uniqueness across AD and Office 365. You want consistency between the attributes in each object so everything is predictable and reliable. Don't include external email addresses in any attributes for your AD users. I see this a lot in our environment, and this always will conflict with the contact object in the cloud. The IM team should know better. And then the ugly. Once you have a conflict, something's got to change or something's got to be excluded. Changing usernames and email addresses is a major inconvenience, and if you exclude the wrong object, that could be a major disruption for your users. Anyway, please comment below, subscribe, share, like. Thank you very much.